Kathy Wood, please, just, just stop. Or I, to be fair to Kathy Wood, media, please just stop following her. She's just, uh, and I know some of you, rightfully so, Clay, why are, you, why are you always talking about her? Well, first off, I don't always talk about her. I think it's like my third or fourth video. But in my defense, when I keep seeing her in the headlines and then I'm tempted, okay, now what she's saying. And then I see the stuff that she's saying, again, please, just stop. And this just makes me, I mean, I've always, you know, I know, but this is just more data on why I understand why people don't like Wall Street, why people don't like quote unquote rich people. I get it. Like you see this sort of stuff and it's just, are you that tone deaf? Are you that just, and I understand why she's saying what she is, but let's just get to it. So there's an article that just came out and her complaints are just, they make sense for her, but for Main Street, hey, I think they're a really good thing. And it also just, one of my kind of, this, you know you're a nerve when you have economic kind of just pet peeves. One of my pet peeves is, oh, deflation is bad. Deflation is bad. No, it's not. Low, I've never had anybody complain about low prices or prices that go down. And I understand the argument, well, that means that companies are gonna make less money and that means that people are gonna have to be laid off because they're making less money. And I understand where that's coming from, but TV companies are still around, right? And what's happened to TV? Think about it. Think about when the high definition TVs first came out. They were really, really expensive. Think about 4K TVs when they first came out. Really, really expensive. Now you can go pick up a 4K TV for less than a thousand bucks and you can get a huge one. And does, does that mean that a bunch of people in the lost or you know, No, it means that innovation is always happening. It's meaning that more people can buy. So sure, they don't need to charge as much because they can just sell more of them. So this whole price is going down, deflation. Oh, it's bad, oh, it's bad. No, it's not, it's not bad. And even from, a, I realize that there is that economic school of thought that always said you need a little inflation. You always need a little inflation. No, you don't. That's such a load of garbage from an economic standpoint, but it's even more of a load of garbage when you see the talking points here that Kathy Wood is trying to make. So yes, I fully admit, maybe a little bit of a rant because once again, Kathy Wood just proves that she just simply got lucky. She acted like a degenerate gambler. She was in the right place at the right time. And now her strategy is getting destroyed and her complaints are all about, well, it's bad because you need to do this because if you do this, then yeah, my strategy depends on it. Uh, but because I'm actually getting destroyed and I can't raise more money from people and you know keep on being rich or whatever, you know th this is why all this is wrong. So let's go to the article. And the article states, that, and or I should say her argument is talking about how the Fed is making a big mistake with its outsized interest rate hikes as inflation turns into deflation. So she does not like deflation at all. So we come down here, and I'm not gonna read the whole article to you, but just set up some context. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell is making a mistake as he continues on a path of outsized interest rate hikes to tame inflation according to ARK Invest Kathy Wood. That's because inflation is quickly turning into deflation, she said. Making matters worse, according to Wood, is the fact that the Fed is overly focused on lagging indicators like employment and core inflation, rather than leading indicators which show signs of deflation. Okay, so let's just, a little bit of context, as you saw, she is complaining about deflation, the Fed's looking at the wrong economic indicators. Okay, fine. Well, what, what indicators are she looking at that is implying that this is a bad situation? Like, like there's deflation going on right now. This is not good. Deflation is bad that, you know, here, here's my data. And to be fair to Kathy, she does provide data. So, <laughs> but, but the data she provide, provides, once again, assuming you're not on Wall Street, assuming that you're not, you know, you don't have a fund that depends on cheap money and that, you know, because all your companies are a bunch of speculative companies that don't make any money, so they have to borrow money. So it's nice when they can borrow it for low amounts. So assuming you're not like in that camp, assuming you're just, dare I say, like a normal person, like myself or other people, here's the data that she is about to present on why deflation. These are the signs of inflation. This is why deflation is bad. But you go down here, leading inflation indicators like gold and copper are flagging the risk of deflation. Even the oil price has dropped more than 35% from its peak, erasing most of the gains this year. Yeah, you just read that right. 
She somehow, not she somehow, she is claiming that you see oil prices drop 35% from the peak. Jeez, that's deflation. Or, or to, Kathy, to those of us that care about the price at the pump, that's a good thing. We, I'm gonna speak for a lot of people when I say, though that deflation we like as consumers with oil cars, that, that's good. We, we really do, not oil cars, gasoline cars. I know somebody will grill me in the comment section, but we, we, we kind of appreciate that, Kathy. That's not a deflation. That's not a number that I think people on Main Street are gonna be upset about. And I think she said, uh, what flagging? Yeah, erasing most of the gains this year. So that's somehow bad that all those gains in oil were erased. Again, we're not talking about stock market gains or you know, just oil gains. That's something that unless you're some sort of futures trader or, or some, you know, again, rabbit hole, Wall Street person, that is a good thing, Kathy. That is a good thing for us normal, mere mortal people. And then you come down here and she gives more. One of the best inflation gauges, the gold price peaked, as she said already, more than two years ago. And in August 2020, at, 20, uh, 27, at 2075 and has dropped 15%. Okay, here we go. Lumber prices have dropped more than 60%. Copper, 30%. Iron ore, 60% down. And then she goes on and lists even more. Now, I'll just stick with the lumber, but if lumber prices are going down, or dare I say, if they are deflating, you know what that does for affordability to people that wanna build a house or just the housing market in general? It does make it more affordable because, well, now it doesn't cost as much to build a house. And I, I don't, I think I'm insulting most of your intelligence. And I don't mean to do that. I'm just ranting about how ridiculous all these claims are about this is bad. We got deflated lumber prices down 60%. You mean it's now 60% more affordable for people to be able to, to build a house or for, you know, to help the housing market out? And then she, you know, copper and all these other commodities are down these, you mean these materials that go in, or you mean these raw organic things that go into other, you know, products? So those prices are going down, which means those product prices are going down, which means consumers get better prices. That, that, that's a problem here, Kathy? No, I, I don't think it's a problem at all. I think consumers like those low prices. And once again, well, that means people are gonna start losing their jobs because prices are going down. No, it just means that they're gonna be able to sell more, which compensates for the fact that they're, you know, instead of having to sell one at X price, you can now sell 10 at Y price, but Y price is lower, which is why you're able to actually help out 10 more people. And, and that's how the system is supposed to work. This is why it's such a false narrative about deflation being so bad, deflation being so bad. But especially in this case, when you're citing oil, which is gas prices, lumber, which is for building, copper, or all these things that are material used for other things, that is good that those are deflating. Bring on the deflation, Kathy, because again, we are not all sitting trying to make our living by loading up on essentially big board penny stocks that don't make money, that are purely speculative, and the only reason they've had success is because the government gave them a bunch of free money in the first place combined with low interest rates. We get it, Kathy. You want interest rates to come back down so that your companies have a chance to start borrowing more money again at dirt cheap prices so that your funds can potentially make a recovery. I respect that, Kathy. I understand your motivation. I'm just saying that it's a really bad look when you're sitting there and saying that the Fed is being stupid because they've brought down oil 35%, they've brought down lumber 60%, and that's somehow a mistake on the Fed's part because it's deflation. No, Kathy, we mere mortals enjoy it. So yes, bring on that deflation. And don't fall for the whole thing about deflation is bad. No, 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 no. Low prices are good. As a consumer, I like low prices and I know you like low prices also. So that's all I have. Again, in my defense, I wouldn't have done this video if the mainstream media doesn't keep throwing Kathy Wood out there like she's some sort of you know, economic genius. She's not. She was in the right place at the right time. Her fund went up for a little bit. When, let's be real, all stocks were going up and now it's crashing because she loaded up on a bunch of essentially big board penny stocks that are losing a bunch of money and are gonna continue to lose money. And a lot of them will go bankrupt because they can't sit there and survive now by borrowing money for dirt cheap rates because the Fed's gonna keep raising those interest rates up and creating deflation. I love it, Kathy. I love those lower gas prices. I love lower lumber prices. I just like lower prices. And I think that's it. So Kathy Wood, I understand your motivation. I just happen 
to disagree with you. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too, good, way too good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.